Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Why do you think that, like, whoever it is in Denver, I'm not sure what the political standing or background is in Denver, right? Or Colorado in general, huh? The Denver. Democrat? liberal yep okay so you think they're just deliberately standing back and letting these guys do what they have to do to what what's the end game here um since well since actually since that night that i was talking about you know they did over four million dollars in damages mm-hmm. since eight they actually i would have to admit denver pd has been doing a really good job in cracking down on them mm-hmm. uh they're i mean they're not letting them do anything that when they start seeing them do violence they're jumping in. So again, there's no reason I don't go downtown. There's no reason really for, for us to go downtown anymore. Okay. Because I mean, they're doing their job again. I'm just, I'm just here to make sure that, you know, stuff like Wisconsin, Portland, Seattle, shit like that doesn't happen. I mean, uh, you had a, <laughs> a group that sets up six, what, nine city blocks that causes the inside the United States in a major city. And nobody does a damn thing about it. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, they're extorting the business for $300 a day mm-hmm. for not doing business. Mm-hmm. They I think it was like five or six women end up getting raped during this time. And, what, three people got killed? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so, I think at some point uh, when that was all dissolved, there were negotiations before that. And I'm not sure what they exactly gave those guys to dissolve that whole thing. Yeah, I'm, hold on, I'm plugging the phone in. Oh, okay. But, but yeah, I mean, it's 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 sad. and. You know, I'm sitting there kind of waiting. Well, where are all these uh, so-called militias and three percent groups? When are they going to start standing up? Because that isn't that what they're designed for? For things that are, you know, chaos in the streets. You help kind of keep the order. Mm-hmm. Um, but they weren't doing it, so they weren't really standing. So I was like, screw it, I'll start my own thing. And, mm-hmm. and after, you know, I went down the first, the first one that, well, the second one that I did. I again, I had about, I did a call out. We had about eighty to 90, 90 people show up. Um, and because we heard Antifa was supposed to be there, was about 300. They're going to bust like 300. I, actually, I heard anywhere between 300 to 1,000. I was believing more on the 300 side. But I think it was actually, you know, being like a handful of them actually came in. They're all from out of state, just like I was told. But the fact that we were there actually deterred them because we had an infiltrator that went inside. They, they were talking to a few of them. Again, he did, they didn't know who he was. But they were opening up their backpacks. They always carried the backpacks. And they, they had rocks, frozen water bottles. Again, the, the whole fireworks thing. And as they're talking, they're saying, you know, we're supposed to work. I'm coming down here just so we can start destroying the, destroying everything down here. But these guys are here. And they're mm-hmm. pointing at us. Mm-hmm. So, again, I mean, we didn't have to do anything but just show up. And that's, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I, uh, what can you tell us about this guy? I think I heard you refer to him as Tex. So did you, the, the guy that got shot and died here, right? Do you know this guy? Nope, never knew him. I, I, I met him that day briefly. Of course, I meet a lot of people and I do things. Mm-hmm. Um, so, no, I didn't know him. Uh, he, his, his group came out with us one night uh, down in Aurora. Uh, but I know he was a hat maker. I guess he, uh, he was very well known for making hats. You know, mm-hmm. I was watching the show of it, and uh, he makes like the Charlie Daniels hat, you know, the big bull hats. And, but he makes it all, all day. Mm-hmm. He was a veteran, American Patriot. Obviously, he was mm-hmm. he was a father. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you know, he was a pretty nice guy. Uh, Might have been, you know, maybe a little overzealous at times. But I mean, who isn't? But uh, I haven't heard anything really negative about the guy. Mm-hmm. So, okay. Have you looked at the news media? That's uh, like what's come out in the actual news media. You know, where I, I look at us as being social media. What we're doing here, right? Uh, except for John, John is John is credentialed. Thank, <laughs> thank. Yeah, um, but we're we're the rest of us are technically in in, in uh, social media. But the actual news media coming out and talking about this, have you looked at any of that? Like how they're reflecting on uh, the victim here, the guy that was arrested for the shooting. There was supposed to be a security guard, even yourself. Uh, I haven't really watched the news itself. I've kind of read a couple things. Of course, you know we're. Anytime you're patriotic, you come out the way way I do. They're always gonna put you in the bad light, no matter what. Mm-hmm. Uh, even I mean, if, if freaking dude killed freaking 
20 kids in the process, they, I would still be the bad guy in full time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's just what I do. Um, but no, I really haven't been watching the news because I'm just waiting on information to come out before. I mean, I people are asking me, like me, obviously, you know, I got news. They're trying to hit me up. Hey, come do an interview. I'm like, dude, I'm not going to do an interview an hour after something happens. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They just want to be the first ones to put something out. So I have about 50 freaking requests for news. Mm-hmm. Have you done any interviews since this? Since this happened? No, I started doing them on Monday morning. Monday? Oh, okay, so we're getting like an exclusive. Yeah. So you yeah, better. So it... Kevin, I know you're getting some tough questions ready here for TIG. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, to me, it's, um, it's relatively simple. There's one thing that we can draw out of this, and that's patience, right? Because I saw the steel shots. When we got back from New Mexico, mm-hmm. and you know the steel shot just shows a guy getting slapped, then you know a guy getting maced, and then a guy falling. So it, the steel shots, without explanation, make it look like that the guy, um, you know, uh, slapped him in the face, then maced him and was shot in the process, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and it looks it looks pretty one sided. I'm smart enough to know, depending on who's putting it out, to do some more research and you know keep my mouth shut and tied, kind of get some more information. So really, the question isn't tough. Tig's pretty clear about his stance on things. Um, and if you are going to go out and present a message, I mean, that's what we do. We're Americans. I think that what people need to realize, though, that aren't really uh, plugged in is that I get Antifa is one thing, right? Now, now, I'm the guy that's turned down Antifa members when they ask, could they train with me? I've turned them down because I don't, I don't like what they represent, right? Mm-hmm. Um, then there's uh, the BLM uh, portion of it. What I would like for people to understand is there are two parts of BLM. Two, two big ones anyway, right? Not going to say there aren't subsets. There are the people that are protesting, whether you agree or disagree with them. They show up, they protest, they go home. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah. then there are the people that wait till it gets dark and they go around and they start doing the, the destruction and the rioting. Um, so I think that all Americans are against um, the chaos, more Americans than not. Even when you look back to Louisville, when that erupted several months ago, there was a, uh, a riot officer that got separated from his unit and he's by himself. Yep. And you saw a line of black men around him and linked arms and mm-hmm. keeping a crowd at bay. So you're not going to attack this guy, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. none of us are with that. Nobody is, right? So I think that when we have incidents where somebody shows up to cause problems, like violent problems, not because mm-hmm. I want to argue with you, not because I want to show that my sign is meaner than yours or none of that crap. But when they want to show up and they want to be physically violent, they want to um, incite those type of things. And I think, obviously, you know, as anybody should, you should be ready to deal with that because you get into kind of a thing, right? Like, I understand the parent in me, especially, understands like, yo, they're going to be causing chaos. I don't want to be a part of it. Let me let me stay home. But then there's the other part of me that's like, well, if I got something to say, because I'm a very vocal person. So if I got something to say, damn it, I'm going to say it. Mm-hmm. And I want I should be able to go anywhere and stand for what I stand for and not feel like I'm going to be attacked because of my beliefs. It's not something we should be up under. And if they're out there doing I'm listening to Tig explain the story about what happened, which I was waiting on. Right. I've listened to other stories mm-hmm. and now I'm listening to the man himself say what happened. And if 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 half of that is true. Um, the fact that you shouldn't have been out there with a gun, the fact that you're with a group of people that are looking for conflict, um, the fact that, you know, you looks like you were actually drawing a gun to shoot this guy from a simple assault, which guess what? It's not legal to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, And he was trying to mace you to prevent from being shot. And unfortunately, he didn't win that fight. Mm -hmm. Um, So if, if any of that, if the majority of that is the way that it really is, then I think that we do have a problem. I'm seeing a lot of videos. Um, and I'm pretty neutral. You know, I don't do the political stuff. I'm pretty neutral. Uh, and I tell it like it is. But when I do see the majority of these videos coming out, uh, some of them are 30 minutes long. Some of them are 30 seconds long. But when I see the majority of these videos coming out, I am seeing people that identify, they call themselves left or leftist, or they identify that way or Antifa, where they are going up, breaking out car windows. They're going up, you know, getting in people's faces and things like that. I think we just seen a video that went viral from Las Vegas where they were trying to like beating on a truck window and a, a, a kid got out, ran across, kind of pushed the dude across the street. Mm-hmm. Like at a certain point, we can agree to disagree, mm-hmm. right? I don't agree with everything Tig says. I'm pretty sure he doesn't agree with everything I said, but when I see him or when I engage with him, I'm going to respect him like a man. Mm-hmm. I, like that's it's okay. We can, we can say, ah, oh, like, you know, baseball and I hate football or whatever. Like you, you got these things. But when you get to the point to where somebody's not free to stand flat-footed and not worry about you physically assaulting them, then you're not going to run me in the house either. So if we're going to have a conflict, damn it, we're going to have a conflict. Mm-hmm. So um, in this in this, in this this situation, and 
some of the more recent situations that have been going on with these Antifa members attacking people, I, I, I got I to gotta admit, I agree with Tig on that. Like, at, when do we say enough is enough? Because you can't make me stay in the house because you're going to show up. Yeah. Like, that's not okay, right? So when, when do we say enough is enough? And damn it, if you can't stand over there and speak your piece, and I can't stand over here and speak my piece, and maybe we do yell at each other, but we all go home, you don't touch me, you don't look for a reason to kill me and maim me, if um, if you think that anybody, well, anybody with, with, with a sack is going to say, well, let me sit in the house because if I go outside, there might be danger. You live, you're in the wrong country. I mean, we right? lose. We lose. If we can't go out there and say what we have to say, we lose. And as Tig was saying in the beginning, um, I, I've seen the footage, right? The footage is these two groups, you know, like I think they called it dueling, dueling groups. And you had these two groups massively. So I was even thinking to myself, can they even hear each other? over there like what they're what they're shouting but it's fine that's what freedom is supposed to be about we're supposed to be able to go out there and say what we have to feel and not agree with each other and we even used to be able to do that in america like not so far separated we could be face to face not agree with each other argue it out discuss it out and then we didn't feel like hey i gotta kill this guy over it and I also want Americans to realize that even through all this, because one thing that, you know, I will say that the left is really good at, they're, they're great at marketing. They are really good at that, right? Mm -hmm. And so even when you look at BLM, now, uh, Tig, I don't know if you know, Hank knows, John, I don't know if you know either. I spoke out against BLM and Instagram put me on a 30-day punishment. <laughs> Couldn't come. <laughs> I, I could, no, no. Right? Because even with all their moves, even with them supporting Antifa or aligning with Antifa or whatever that relationship is, even BLM, while we're having all these other things going on in the country and they're causing all the, the chaos, the organization BLM doesn't even support me, me as a black man, mm -hmm. right? And on their own website, which I was part of the reason they took that stuff down, it's like on your own website, you were saying that you were about destroying the nuclear family. Well, in the, one of the things that any community needs, including the black community, mm -hmm. is you need fathers at home, you need pillars, you need families, right? right. So how are you about bettering people if you want to really destroy the foundation of what builds good people, right? It doesn't make sense. And they go on to say that their movement is their words, their words, and I'm paraphrasing here, but they are about the advancement of transgender uh, men and women to show that they can be leaders. And you read their entire about section, they are nothing about black men, they mention not one thing. And so when they go out, the part of them that are caught in the destruction, the chaos and want Americans to steadily argue, we're bickering, and not necessarily the guys on this podcast, mm -hmm. but we're bickering with each other collectively, right? And they're in the middle and they don't give a damn about none of us. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that's why we need to all take a step back and just say, well, you know what? If nothing else, if I can't stand out and speak my message without you thinking you're going to intimidate me back into the house, we're going to have a problem. But they aren't. They aren't. They're no more for me than they are for Tig, you or John. Mm -hmm. They want to see us all, you know, biting at each other so they can ultimately gain control. So I think when you ask Tig, what's the end game? I can tell you one thing that they, they're done with these riots or doing with these riots. Downtowns, it is known, most downtowns are in close proximity of poor communities, right? Normally you cross over a street and all of a sudden you're in a poor community mm -hmm. once you get past all the high rises and stuff like that. Antifa and BLM, while they're talking about that they are about, you know, making sure the country is free and equal, what they're really doing as a consequence of their actions, and they're doing it on purpose, is they're making sure gentrification becomes a lot easier. When you do those things, you drive property values down. It makes it easy for investors to come in. They did the same thing in Ferguson. So the community you claim that you care about, you're actually lowering their property values and you're increasing gentrification in their areas. Mm -hmm. So we're, so in a, for a lot of different reasons, we're all being fooled. They did that in Ferguson. Uh, Mike Bloomberg actually had boots on ground in Ferguson. He was there in Ferguson. Try to convince all the guys to go home, all the shop owners to go home. Mm -hmm. He tried to convince them of that. Mm -hmm. And one of the guys I interviewed for NRA TV confirmed that, mm -hmm. right? And what happened? They burnt that area, right? Chaos ensued. And some investment group, like it's 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 behind wall after wall after wall, but some investment group that he is somehow connected to, all of a sudden, right there where the chaos happened, built a brand new hospital. Right. So yeah. when you start really looking at what they're doing, they want to see America fall. They want to see us in chaos. Not saying we should um, avoid the tough issues to talk about. Not saying there aren't problems, but these people don't even care about the problems. They only care about chaos. Yeah. Yep. I agree with that. I remember seeing that. Do you guys? Remember that footage of a young black woman talking to Biden where they gave her the statement to say and she said, I'm not going to say this. And obviously I'm paraphrasing her here, but she said, you know, they get she, she got up to the mic um, and she said they gave me this statement and they want me to read from it. But I'm not going to do that. 
you know, and I'm going to tell you that I, I'm an American <laughs> and I don't, you know, I, I want to protest. I want to talk about some things that are happening that I think that are wrong, but I don't want to burn down my city because I'm, I'm the one that's going to suffer from that. You know, this is essentially what she's saying. I, I'm sure there's some folks out there who've seen that. So, you know, this is the funny thing, right? This is where all the lines, because I guess if like black thought doesn't matter unless you agree with these people who are laying out what sh we should be thinking as black people, right? Or we should be thinking as people. This is happening uh, in lots of different things. So even within guys in the gun community, we don't all just walk in step with whatever someone tries to tell us, this is what you feel like in the gun community, right? right. We, we, right. We, we know what we think and what we believe individually, and we should be able to express that without people trying to force us you know, to step in line and follow some kind of plan. And I think it goes back to what you're saying, Tig, it's an intimidation. I see it happening on a lot of different levels. I know personally, for me, speaking out, looking at things that are happening and talking about it, there's people like, oh, no, you shouldn't, you, you should not do that. Yep. You know, um, can you tell us, uh, John, I don't know if you want to add anything here. Did you have something you wanted to add? Yeah, uh, you and I have been through that a little bit over, like, uh, the past few days, yeah. I guess. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, so if anyone wants – I don't know if John wants to really get into this or not, but, yeah. I'll talk about it. Uh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, I was contacted uh, – first, one of my friends uh, sent me a message saying, what did you do? You pissed off these people. Mm -hmm. So – well, I was like, oh, okay, whatever. Mm -hmm. And and I mean, he's my friend, so he can say whatever whatever he wants, you know. So he expressed his opinion of what was going on, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I get a call from someone I've never spoken to before. And basically what they were saying is that since I'm a white guy, we talked about the negligent discharges at the NFAC rallies. Um and there was two. One was an fat guy. One apparently was an fat guy. But it was at one of their rallies. So we talked, Hank and I talked about that. And they said, you're a white guy, so you shouldn't be talking about black issues, about black people. Um, I'm like, well, I'm reporting the news. It was national news. I'm a journalist. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't look at what the color of the person's skin is. If it's news, I report it. Especially when you have a guy um, that makes a video that's totally wrong and have no idea what he's talking about, that kind of raises the <laughs> the I guess the stature of the reporting. Mm -hmm. So Hank had a video on the second uh, indie, um, and we talked about it. And Hank uh, was like, "Do you think that? Do you think that um, this guy was in fact?" I was like, "I, I don't know." Hank's like, well, how do you become a member? In fact, don't you just show up? And apparently, they took issue with that and thought Hank was trying to pander to the white community. That's what I got out of it, mm -hmm. which is, you know, is kind of crazy. Um, they said, well, if you do talk about black issues, you're not allowed to talk about it with him. I'm like, what are you talking it's about? A, it's, that's all crazy. I mean, first of all, we can't. Here, here's the thing I want to illustrate to you guys. We can't talk to those guys. They've already said they don't care about a gun community, much less what I think about them, what Maj thinks about them, or Kevin. So, you know, I've, all, I've always extended um, the, the invitation for people to come on here. When I, when I reached out to Tig today, right, Tig, you could tell me whether this is true or not. I reached out to you because your name was in that thing. And I know yep. you, and I wanted to know what was up, right? Yep. Um, did I ask you to come on? I, I thought to myself, if, if something's going on here, it would be cool. But you, I think you said to me, hey, if you want me to talk about this on your podcast, I'll come on and talk about it. No, I think you sent me a picture of a gun. Really? So I think a, yeah, I think it was a threat, so I figured I'd come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, he's well, going to joke with you for a long time. Right, right, right. Well, Mike, Mike, uh -huh. If it's... If, if it's a friend saying, hey, I don't think you should talk about that or whatnot, mm -hmm. that, that's one thing. Yeah. Okay. You're, you're my friend. I trust you. You you know, I, I value your opinion and I'll mm -hmm. take your opinion. I might not use your opinion, but I'll at least listen to your opinion. Mm -hmm. If you're somebody I never talked to that somehow got my phone number and decides to call me up 
and tell me I'm not allowed to talk about something, guess what I'm going to do? Talk. I'm going to talk about that. Yeah. And if you want, and if you want me to say this guy called me up, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to say your name. I'm not going to say who you are. Um, cause I've never spoken to you before. I'll probably never speak to you again. Um, the way the conversation ended, I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm never going to speak to them again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we're going to, we're going to do and say what we want to do. Um, and that's the thing. And I think that, so in this particular case, take, this is your, this is your event that you had. And yep. still, I know you said that the media was trying to talk to you. You're not an actual witness to what happened, right? To the, yep. to, to what happened. You were there, you were in the vent, but you know, you're still willing to come on and talk about it. Yep. I think you've been through, this is a terrible thing for that guy who lost his life and his family. And I'm sure that even the, once you, I don't know people, I don't know if people understand this. Once you get into something like this, so even the person who's still alive, you're going to have to now deal with this forever, right? And you're going to have to deal with the repercussions of what you did. And the people around you are going to have to deal with that. And this is why sometimes we have to think about those kinds of things. But Tig's here. I think he's willing to talk to everyone, tell us what happened, have the discussions about it. The, uh, there's other people out there that are doing things and not willing to get out and talk to anyone except the people who would just want to shut up and, you know, go by whatever they say and be intimidated by them. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.